I just want to perhaps start by apologizing on behalf of Mr. Baimas Tal. He was here actually at the beginning. I think some of you saw him. He's very much supportive of this process and uh, has been from the beginning, but he was booked for three sessions at around the same time. So he came here right at the beginning, but we had not quite started, so he had to go for a different session. So I'm making this presentation on his behalf. Um, I'll just go very quickly through the seven objectives of the gender strategy only. Um, since we were told that we wanted to be more of uh, at, in, an interactive session. And uh, I haven't told you my name. My name is Phoebe Luwum. I am Program Officer for Eastern Africa within the Secretariat, the AMCAO Secretariat in Abuja. Um, I am also gender focal point. I'll skip uh, the issues of the process, I think, so that we can go straight to the objectives. Um, the AMCAO policy and strategy on mainstreaming gender in the water sector in Africa. The very first strategic objective that uh, consult, um, that the partners consulted thought was important was the issue of an enabling environment that policy positions on gender in the water sector in Africa should be supported and strengthened through policy formulation and implementation. We already have a lot of this uh, that has been done. Countries are at different levels, but still there is so, still some work to be done. And under this, we have um, a number of sub, sub areas. The first one is securing high level commitments to gender equality in the sector. I know that gender appears in all the declarations we have in the Shamel Sheikh, in the Ethequini, and so on. But the fact that it's not being properly implemented at all levels, the input indicators and other sorts of indicators indicate that there's still something to be done. So there, is, there are some actions which were pointed out here, building capacity of stakeholders, advocacy for gender responsive water management, and getting uh, gender into curricula of higher level in institutions of learning. Um, supporting gender responsive policy and legislative uh, frameworks was seen to be also important. Um, there are those that already exist. Some of them need to be reviewed. We need mechanisms to ensure that these frameworks actually uh, ensure that the vulnerable, vulnerable people have a voice in policy um, development. And then the human and financial capacity of key institutions such as AMCAO, of the countries themselves for advocacy in gender and for monitoring. The third part of this objective is promoting particip participation of women in uh, key, making, uh, key decision making positions. In the water sector, the emphasis is very much on science and um, technical uh, capacity, and not very many women are in these positions that uh, can influence decisions. So leadership training programs for women were seen as important, as well as technical training programs. And the last one in this, under this objective is actively engaging and coordinating with all stakeholders. The second strategic objective is ensuring that we have uh, the right amount of human and financial resources allocated to gender mainstreaming. Under this, we, to um, we talk about developing country-specific gender mainstreaming requirements and zero uh, budgets to act as a basis for resource mobilization. I think many countries don't even have an idea of what is it that is required to get gender to the point where they want it to be. Undertaking uh, gender inclusive resource mobilization, ensuring technical capacity of stakeholders in gender mainstreaming, and of course the capacity for gender responsive budgeting. The third strategic objective is um, taking a gender approach to implementing project interventions within the water sector. 
This including economic empowerment through equal access to water for productive use. This was seen as quite important because um, before this, uh, there's, there's been a lot of uh, emphasis on water supply and um, water supply and uh, and water services at the expense of the productive use of water, which is very, uh, very much a big part of uh, the women's role in Africa. Under this, uh, we have uh, the aspect of gender analysis as an integral part of planning and implementation. This as a communication and awareness lever. And then we also have uh, gender training also still as an awareness lever. And a number of uh, actions are uh, identified there as things that stakeholders could do. Under that, still the third, the third part of that objective, we have the promoting economic empowerment. This as a communication and awareness le lever. And uh, we think that stakeholders should uh, emphasize programs for equal access to water for productive purposes, projects aimed at equal access to water for productive use, and uh, documenting lessons learned in economic empowerment of women in the water sector, scaling up and inst institutionalizing good gender practice, as well as developing guidelines for integrating gender in water for production. This area is actually quite heavily emphasized because it is still um, something that we hope that a session like this will come up with many good ideas. The fourth part is developing and implementing gender and water action plans that will undertake gender responsive community action, action on water projects and that will mainstream gender in national and lower level uh, water sector plans. And then there's also the aspect of designing water programs and interventions that are gender responsive, as well as establishing country-specific guidelines for gender mainstreaming. Objective number four, undertaking strategic research and collection of operational information on gender. Oh. I only have two more minutes, okay. The, the fourth objective is really about um, developing new knowledge around what is it in gender mainstreaming that has been done and what needs to be done and taken forward. And then objective number five, um, the human and inst institutional capacity to support gender equality. This is still seen as lacking supporting lead agencies and gender management teams to develop their capacity for gender mainstreaming. This would be at all levels, whether it is parliamentary, at the national level, or, at, or still at the lower levels. And advocating for the establishment of structures and mechanisms that will promote gender mainstreaming. And then the issue of um, Having champions was seen as quite key in this area to develop uh, the political will and as well as capacity for gender. So recruiting eminent persons to advance this gender strategy. Um, setting up GMS structures. GMS is gender management structures and mechanisms to implement uh, actions in national water plans. Um, I should say that the gender, the AMCAO gender strategy was very, is very much aligned to the African Union gender policy. And this is one of the areas that, um, this, is, this is a structure that is taken from the African Union gender policy, the gender management structure. It includes uh, pursuing an en enabling environment um, putting the right institutions in place, having the GSM mechanisms and the GSM process. Those are the institutional roles. 
So this is very much um, the conceptual framework around which the gender strategy, the AMCAO gender strategy is built. So from the gender management structure, objective number six, mechanisms to promote cooperation and coordination for mainstreaming gender in the water, in the water sector to be strengthened. Um, establishing strategic partnerships for gender strategy implementation, developing gender mainstreaming learning platforms at regional and national levels, and establishing twinning programs at regional and national levels. And then the last objective, M&E system and indicators to support gender equality interventions. Uh, and I think this is uh, the basis for this very seminar. Um, thank you. I'll stop there.